Hey everybody, I'm Paul and today I wanted to talk a little bit about transportation, specifically the most common mode of transportation and that is cars, automobiles, rides, whips, bad slang, uh, cars, right? Pretty much every American owns a car. I'm currently driving and commuting right now. So I have a, about a 30 to 35 minute commute from where I live to where I work. Most Americans will have somewhat of a commute where they live in a suburb or a, a municipality or a city outside of a larger city. So for example, the largest city to me is Columbus. Columbus, in American standards, is probably an, an average-sized city, I would say. Maybe maybe below average in terms of size. It's a really nice city. I, I love Columbus. Columbus is great. But in terms of the overall size, it, it's not as big as most. So anyway, most Americans will live a little bit outside of the city, and then they will commute, commute to work. I got bad lighting here, but that's all right. Well, commute to work. So, uh, I mentioned for me, I've got about a 30 to 35 minute commute and I drive my own car. It's a pretty, pretty sweet ride. Kia Forte, 2015. Look it up. It's pretty dope. So, I have my Kia Forte and I drive uh, about 25 miles, uh, not kilometers, but miles one way to work. So 25 miles to work, 25 miles back home from work. And it's a pretty standard commute, I would say. It's not bad. And so I, again, I drive my own car. Um, pretty much every American has their own car. Uh, when I say own car, I mean a car that they have purchased or a car that um, maybe they have uh, gotten financing from, from the bank, or maybe a car that they are leasing, uh, that is also a possibility. So, how's that work? Um, again, pretty much every American will go through this. My wife has a car, my in-laws have multiple cars, so many cars. Everybody's got a car. If you don't have a car in America, it's a little bit weird. Like, you don't have a car? Like Luke. Luke doesn't have a car. He's a weirdo. Anyway, um, so how does one go about getting a car, purchasing a car? I think that's valid question. Uh, until a couple of years ago, I didn't really know myself, so this is the first car I really purchased. Um, in high school, my parents purchased me a car, I guess. It's usually how it works when you're in high school, your parents get you a car. Anyway, so so there's, there's a few different options for, for purchasing a car. One is that you can you can uh, see a car that you want. Let's say that car is $20,000, which I would say for, for, a, for a nice newer car, $20,000 is, is pretty decent. Maybe it's $15,000. Again, you know, decent art range. You could get a car that's like $70,000 or $80,000 or, or even more than that. It just really depends on what you want. I'm trying to fix the lighting here. It really just depends on what you want. So um, you can do a few things. So say you get a car, again, back to the point. You, get a, you want a car, it's 20, 20 grand. Grand is just slang for 1,000, so 20,000 bucks. And you're like, all right, I want it. So say you have $20,000 that you, you have available to spend. And so you can just go to a car dealership. Car dealership is where you purchase cars. And you can pay $20,000 and drive home the car. Great. You don't have to pay any more money. That's awesome. It's probably the most cost-effective. Cost-effective meaning um, best way to spend the least amount of money on a car or on something. You could have, um, you could use cost-effective in a lot of different situations, circumstances. So you could do that. That's one option. Purchase outright. Purchase outright. So 20k. 20k, 20 grand, 20 grand, 20,000, you have 20,000, you pay it. The second option, and this is what a lot of folks do, including myself, um, you get financing. Financing from from a bank. Try to... The second option is financing. 
So you can get financing from a bank. So say again, you want that $20,000 car, right? And you don't have $20,000. It's a bummer. So you have to go to a bank and say, hey, I want a $20,000 car. I want $20,000. And they'll say, all right. And they'll do something called a credit check. Credit check. Credit is something that is attached to your name. So it has to do with the amount of money that you are allowed to borrow based off of your credit history. Meaning, in the past, have you borrowed money from a bank and how well have you done in repaying the bank the money that they lent you according to the agreement that was established? All right, so credit. So if the bank gives you $20,000 and they say, okay, you have to pay us back over 48 months, that, that $20,000, which means you're gonna pay, I don't know, I'm terrible at math, $350 a month, and that includes interest. And interest is this little percentage they tack on to make money, it's the worst, right? No fun. So they, they say, hey, we're gonna, we're gonna give you 20 grand, but you are going to pay us 10% interest, right? So, over 48 months, you pay the bank back that money. So if you have good credit, it's great because you'll get a lower interest rate, which means you'll pay less money over the life of your loan or the amount that was lent or given to you. Loan is, is an amount of money that you acquire from a bank or from an individual. It's a loan, right? So if the bank gives you uh, 20 grand, 48 months, you can go to a car dealership where they, again, where they sell cars and say, hey, here's $20,000 from the bank, give me the car. And they're like, all right, sweet, there you go. And they give you the car, which is great. But again, you have to pay that, pay that off over 48 months, 72 months, whatever the agreement of your loan is. And again, it's gonna be more expensive than if you were to buy it outright. The third option, the third option is called a lease. And a lease is where you go to a car dealership where they purchase or where they sell cars and where you purchase cars. And they have new cars, which is awesome, right? You can get a 2019 Kia Forte. I say Kia Forte because I have a 2015 Kia Forte. Let me tell you, it is real nice. Um, so you say, I want a 2019 Kia Forte, I'm gonna lease it. So what they will do is they say, great. Well, you can pay us $2,000 now or $3,000 now and we will give you this 2019 Kia Forte and you're only going to pay $150 per month, 150 bucks per month. And you're like, all right, great. Here's the catch though. You only get it for maybe 12 months or 24 months or 36 months. It just depends. There's different, different leasing options. And then there's also another catch. You can only drive it so many miles. Again, in, in, in America, we use miles, uh, not kilometers. I don't even know if I'm saying kilometers correctly. It could be kilometers. I don't know. So you can only drive it, say if you have a 12-month lease, you can only drive your car 12,000 miles. If you have a 24-month lease, you can only drive it 24,000 miles. So really, it's, it usually comes out to about uh, 12,000 miles per year or 1,000 miles per month. So this can be a little bit restricting, right? Again, you're only paying $150 per month, but you can't drive wherever you want. And if you have a long, long commute, like myself, um, I usually put about 24,000 miles on my car per year. So that wouldn't work for me, right? Which is why I had to, to buy my car with a loan and then therefore pay more money over the life of the loan. No fun. So uh, leases are great, but they're really only good for people with short commutes. So those are the three different ways that you can purchase a car. Um, and I've hopefully given you enough detail to at least understand, but not so much detail that it makes no sense. I really got a little distracted there with the credit. Um, but I hope you've enjoyed this short, hopefully helpful video on how Americans purchase cars. And again, pretty much every American doesn't buy a car. Uh, pretty much every American has a car. Anyone who doesn't, like Luke, is a weird guy. All right, hope you've enjoyed this video. I'll talk to you next time.